In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning so welcome to our celebration of the Lord's passion and death and resurrection. Today we also um, celebrate the feast of the Our Lady of Guadalupe. And we pray it's the patron saint for the Americas. Let's ask the Lord through the intercession of our Mother Mary that we may experience God's compassion and mercy today. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, who place your people under the singular protection of your Son's Most Holy Mother, Grant that all who invoke the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe may seek with ever more lively faith the progress of peoples in ways of justice and of peace. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. The prophet Elijah arose like a fire, his word flaring like a torch. It was he who brought famine on them, who decimated them in his zeal. By the word of the Lord, he shut up the heavens. He also three times brought down fire. How glorious you were in your miracles, Elijah. Has any one reason to boast as you have? Taken up in the whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses, designated in the prophecies of doom to ally God's wrath before the fury breaks, to turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and to restore the tribes of Jacob. Happy shall be happy shall they be who see you and those who have fallen asleep in love. The word of the Lord. Be Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cherubim throne. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All people shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As they came down from the mountain, the disciple put this question to Jesus. Why do the scribes say that Elijah has, come, has to come first? True, he replied, Elijah is to come to see that everything is once more as it should be. However, I tell you that Elijah has come already, and they did not recognize him, but treated him as they please. And the Son of Man will suffer similarly at their hands. The disciples understood then that he had been speaking of John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Lord. So the first reading, it's a, it's a description of Prophet Elijah, no? what he has done, and the, the powerful presence of God in and through him. Um, you know, it's, it's being described here. And, you know, in the New Testament, uh, now in the Gospel, no, that Jesus was talking about uh, John the Baptist, as the Elijah that is to come you know, before the Messiah comes. You know? That Elijah would come back and then, uh, then the Messiah would come. You know? But the, the word that used by Jesus here is say they did not recognize him and treated him as they pleased. You, know? you see, when John the Baptist came, his message is that of repentance and turning back to the Lord and preparing the way for the Messiah, the Christ. Now, but he came in uh, camel's clothing. He lived in the desert. Um, you know, and the leaders and the elders and the people um, did not recognize him because no? they were looking at the external. They were judging him from his appearance and even from his family background. No? Um, as you see and heard in the lives of David, you know, the Lord looks at the heart. You know, the Lord looks into our hearts, and that's where he, he sees uh, who we are, you know, our character, the kind of person we are. I think that's very important when we celebrate this coming of the Lord in Advent and also preparing for the birth of our Lord Jesus, is that he came you know, in a very simple and humble way. You know, and even the people of his time did not recognize him. It's very clear in the Gospel of John, no? in the first chapter, that he came into his own and they did, they did not recognize him. So it's the same with John the Baptist, it's the same with Jesus, you know, because um, people kind of judge through appearance, status, sometimes possessions, behaviors. You know. And uh, I think that's very important that, um, you know, we allow the Lord to really come into our hearts, that our hearts can really recognize him as the one who is to come. You know, he came, but he will also come back. You know, that he is the one that we need. He is the one that we are longing for, the word of God alive in us. But we need to create space to recognize God. You know, you see, for Elijah, he needs to come to a place of silence. You know, and he recognized the presence of God by a gentle breeze, by a silent breeze, you no know, silent wind. Even John the Baptist has go to the wilderness and to, to spend time with God. It's the same with Jesus, you no? Know? what we do in Lent, no? He went into the desert to be with God. 
So that's very important for us to be able to recognize the voice, the presence, and you know, the coming of the Lord. We need to create space. You know, a time of silence, a time of prayer, a time of really looking into our hearts, into our lives, our interior life. Now, I've experienced this myself. I've been very busy with all the external activities, good things, no? ministries, relationships, achievements, even for the church and for the communities. But my external activity cannot be sustained by my interior life. No? My interior life, uh, you know, the place where I and the Lord can commune, um, it's not strong enough, it's not deep enough to sustain my external activities. No? Why? Because, you know, I've been, I've been drawn to performance. I've been drawn to what people say. I've been drawn to being judged by, you know, uh, the external appearance. Um, we have that tendency, you know, we want recognition. We want... Um, confirmation or validation. And most of the time, we do that by our activities, what we can do, what we have, what we look like. And, but the Lord comes to the heart. The Lord meets us in the depth of our hearts. And my encouragement for you is that don't let this Advent pasta pass very quickly without really creating a space to listen and to be with uh, the Lord Jesus. No? So if you have an hour this weekend, if you have a day in the next two weeks, if you even have a couple of days to, to spare and to create some time and to commune with the Lord, no? like a wilderness in the city, uh, like a, a desert in your daily life, so my encouragement for you is um, you know, to really create a space so that you and I can really recognize the Lord. Uh, that His coming uh, will not be neglected in our lives. No? It's a beautiful psalm today. I'd just like to end with this hymn. No? It's from Psalm 79. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. No? Um, this is man, is a general, no? it's men and women. No? And in John 15, the Lord says to his disciple, uh, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. So all believers or followers of Jesus are chosen by him. And it says here that uh, he will give life no? so that we can call upon his name. So I pray that you can create a space today and before Christmas to, to really call upon the name of the Lord. You know, that he can give you life from within. No? That your interior life is far more stronger to sustain your external activities. Let us pray to Christ, whom the scriptures foretold, and whose coming we await in this holy season. Come, Jesus our Saviour. Come, Jesus our Saviour. Isaiah foretold that the Spirit of the Lord would rest upon you. Come to us, bringing wisdom and understanding. Come, Jesus. The Spirit of counsel and power is given to you. 
Move the hearts of all who govern or rule. Come, Lord Jesus, the Saviour. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Teach us to know the Father as he is. Come, Jesus, our Saviour. As now we live with you in faith and hope, prepare us to see the Father face to face. Come, Jesus, our Saviour. We pray for a spirit of neighbourly love during the current health crisis. May we not yield to fear and self-interest, but choose to put ourselves at the service of others. Come, Jesus, our Saviour. We thank the Lord for the gift of life of Father Dan. We pray for him and his uh, ministry. And also we pray for his family and for his mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. The hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands who become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, these offerings, and by your power change them into the sacrament of salvation, in which fulfilling the sacrifices of the fathers is offered the true Lamb, Jesus Christ, your Son, born of the ever-Virgin Mary in a way beyond all telling, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's end, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Benedict, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord our God, always show forth your mercy in us, that we who commemorate in faith the mother of your Son may be saved by his incarnation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.